Welcome to the Sharkpreneur Podcast with Kevin Harrington and Seth Green. Kevin Harrington is the inventor of the infomercial, one of the original sharks from the hit TV show Shark Tank, and has generated over $5 billion in TV and digital direct response sales. Seth Green is the world's first trusted authority on cutting edge direct response marketing, a best-selling author, and the only three-time Marketer of the Year nominee. On the podcast, Kevin and Seth interview sharkpreneurs who share straight talk on what it takes to explode your business. Why do so many businesses struggle while others seem to explode overnight? Do you wish you had the secret to this type of exponential growth? Now, I've scaled more than 20 businesses to over $100 million, and it's not just luck. In my new book with Mark Tim, Mentor to Millions, you'll learn the repeatable framework I use in all my business ventures for massive success. Order at KevinMentor.com and get over $1,000 in bonuses. Head to KevinMentor.com. Welcome to the podcast. This is your co-host, Seth Green. Today, I've got the good fortune to be interviewing Mark Jacobs of ScaleWorks.co. Mark has spent 30 years in executive leadership, successfully guiding major growth initiatives, many starting as turnaround efforts. He's led recapitalization, startups, key organizational change agendas that have scaled company growth and performance. He's co-authored the Smart Scale Process, which is built on his years of hands-on experience and expertise in lean manufacturing, quality systems, sales and ops planning, category design development, leadership development, and technology-driven transformations. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Hey, Seth, it's a pleasure. Actually, it's an honor. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Likewise. Let's go back in time a little bit. How did you get started? Uh, well, you know, like every good business guy, uh, I, I was an entrepreneur as a kid, and my dad said, you need to get an accounting degree, and I almost flunked out of college. And um, my uh, professor was good enough to, or one of the professors was good enough to say, you know, you just don't get using numbers twice, so I'm going to show you how to use them once. Here's a thing called quality systems. I'm going to try to write a textbook on it. Do you want to do the research? And uh, just sent me down a path to appreciation of process. And that's sort of where the world opened up for me. So um, from my perspective, it's all about how can you really make the equations work and predict? And uh, can you bring people around them so that they can see it too? And then we get a lot more horsepower and a lot more people see things. Absolutely. How did ScaleWorks get started? Um, I had uh, gotten, I had sidetracked into working on a, a technology we, uh, business. I had uh, gotten into the uh, couple of companies that we had purchased and they were very successful. We were very fortunate to um, have those companies grow past our expectations. And there was a limiting factor that we kept bumping into, which was helping people learn fast enough to keep up with what was happening around us not just in the organization, but in, in the world in general, so that their perspective as they came to um, help grow the business was as well-rounded as it could possibly be so that we weren't running down rabbit holes all the time. And I got involved with a company that was um, building itself out as a um, interactive video platform. And the idea was that that interactivity gave people the uh, opportunity to get a high level view and then they could dig in when they were interested in more detail and we couldn't get it to grow. And so when we stepped back, we started asking questions around what did we miss in this? Cause we knew the problem, but we couldn't see get to many other companies to recognize it. And as we took it apart, we just had one of those aha moments that said, oh my God, we missed the boat completely. If we would be doing these things, this thing would grow. And we started talking to our customers about doing those things and our customers started growing and all of a sudden the the technology in the background had no value to us because we had the privilege of working with really smart teams of people who were just energized about trying to grow their business. And we thought we better step back and build a protocol around this so we knew what we were speaking to. And that's where um, ScaleWorks evolved out of all that, all of that serendipity. All right. And what are you finding are some of the most common mistakes those businesses are making when it comes to um, growing and scaling? Well, reflecting back on that horrible experience of trying to get an accounting degree, um, the first thing is they don't recognize the most important assets on their balance sheet are probably 
footnotes, which are what's the value of your customer base and what's the value of the data in your business and how do you use that or how do you create a data um, center that gives us enough information to actually impact the uh, lifetime value of the customer and stop with the super marketing uh, pitch, pitch until you really understand what the customer, uh, what we're give, going to give the customer that gives them a better version of themselves. And so we built a, uh, a, a, um, a lexicon that's all about what is the audience? Who is the audience? How do you give them a better version of themselves? And how do you become, how do you focus that in such a way that when they hear it, they go, yeah, of course, that's what I want. And how do you become the authority at that? And then how do you build the entire experience around that whole better version of myself as a customer? Then there's another problem that runs into that is that once we start to get to that place where people are recognizing that the organization is doing an outstanding job, the next question is, do you have the right business model to continue to grow it? Is that helpful? Yeah, very much so. So what are like the types of companies that you work for? Who's an ideal client for you? Um, anybody who has the, uh, has the mindset that they can do better than just work harder, but they can actually scale their business. And we've worked with, uh, people in the construction industry. We've worked with people in the, um, uh, engineering industry, uh, worked with manufacturers, uh, worked with service organizations. I mean, the limiter for us is the mindset of the leadership team. You say the limiter, what do you mean by that? Uh, we only take on seven, eight clients a year just because we get so, so deeply involved with them. And the last thing we want to do is work with a leadership team that's just looking for a silver bullet. This is a process and it's a lifestyle. And so we're looking for the folks that are, so leadership's a, uh, reflect, uh, leadership is, is everything when it comes to a culture, right? Because culture is a reflection of that leadership. So we're looking for uh, leadership teams that are, that are jazzed about seeing their organization flower and really deliver value to their customer base so that the customer lifetime value continues to escalate as well as the number of customers. And I don't think that's industry specific. I think that's really leadership mindset specific. Absolutely. What are, I mean, you've had so many amazing results. Talk about a recent client you can withhold identity if you have a confidentiality policy that needs you to, but just tell us a little bit about what was their challenges? What did they come to you for? And then kind of the magical transformation you were able to engineer. Well, and I, I'd like to talk about, well, we've got a, a couple of really amazing organizations that we're working with today. Um, but one in particular is a small dev shop. And they have a specialty, which is, hey, you know, if you're in the life, if you're in the life sciences business, um, there's probably a better way to take that life science to market. And technology enablement is only one point of, of contact. They were into the technology enablement side, and now they're recognizing because of their experience with helping some of these life science businesses do so much more and deliver such a much better. Uh, a, um, environment for the life sciences customers to uh, benefit, they've started to think in terms of how do we become a architect for uh, life science business growth, as opposed to what are we doing just to build the interactions that the life science company has with its, with its customer base. And I am just shocked at the deep insight that these guys didn't even recognize they have about creating customer value for their customers, but they just never wanted to talk about it. So as we put it out on our model and they started talking to their customers, all of a sudden their customers are saying, wait a minute, we can scale and you guys have the, uh, the background to help show us ways internally, not just through technology, but through the development of our culture to, to deliver these kind of results to our customers. And they're redefining a category. I mean, they are becoming scale architects for the, the biotech industry, for the life, I'm sorry, for the life sciences industry. Um, another firm is uh, in the, um, in, is, is a um, engineering firm itself. And they're primarily working in um, community development infrastructure. And uh, they found that their expertise gives them the ability to not just do design and, and um, work 
against the, the, the legal requirements, but actually to deliver a whole lifestyle segment off of whatever it is that they're designing so that the building, the bridge, whatever it is, has a, a, a better life cycle of its own. And as a result, you can imagine those of us that are conscious about um, doing the next right thing for our communities. Now, all of a sudden, the communities are not seeing them as engineers, but are seeing them as, as true architects of lifestyle. And it's kind of exciting to see what happens as they flower. That is exciting. You've had so many amazing results. What's your biggest challenge now? Um, finding a few people that would like to carry this on for us or with us. So you're working we, on legacy. Yep. We're doing, we're, we're trapped in our, you know, we're trapped building our own shoes. <laughs> right. So we're eager to find some, some uh, talent that'll join us. Your passion is obvious. What do you like best about what you're doing? Uh, the, you know, there is nothing cooler than to be in the energy of people succeeding. And to see them look at themselves and say, I never knew this was inside of me. And to watch them nail it, uh, that's exciting to me. I, I can see it. You light up when you talk about it. If you had to start over, what would you do differently? Uh, I would have skipped the accounting degree completely. <laughs> <laughs> That no. seems to be a recurring thing. <laughs> yeah, right, right. That's it's. A, it's um, I seriously, um, I would have spent more time on the economic side of things and understanding how um, to think um, in terms of multivariant, if in, or to think about how so many different things come together to make outputs, so that I would have had a broader perspective. And if I would have done that, I would have spent a lot more time understanding patterns and maybe the history of humanity, because it seems like it's just recurring themes when we get into these organizations. And it may be that the business and technology cycles have an impact, but at the end of the day, it's really the human pattern of how people grow that, um, well, that's the predictor of will the organization be successful. Okay. And you give advice every day. What's the best advice you've ever got? Don't pitch, just be yourself. People accept you for the people appreciate you for the knowledge and accept you for your ability to join in and learn together. And um, I had a mentor out a guy named Pat Canavan who sat me down one day and said, you know, let's just take this to a different, and he said, rhythm. And the rhythm is really based on how effectively the organization can come together. Why don't you, instead of try to push that, why don't you just get in the rhythm and see if you can't help lead it? I know that you are a voracious learner um, and you're always trying to improve yourself. What are some of the best books you've ever read? Well, oh, wow. I, first of all, I, anybody who can pull a book together that leaves an impact or leaves an impression, I just have so much respect for them. I'd hate to knock anybody out of that list because there've been so many great inspirations. But, you know, right now, um, I, and I don't remember the man who wrote its name. I feel terrible about it. But the economics of data, the way the guy approached, and I can certainly send you back the book's name, but the way the, the guy approached the fact, uh, approached data and humanity and how they come together and the fact that it's a pattern about, you know, use information to make yourself better and more effective or make the organization better and more effective than use it to help be predictive in the operation of the organization, then help use it to help deliver insights into how to create better versions of the customer when they're in the environment that the, the business is built. I think he did a brilliant job of bringing that together to speak to not just the sequencing of it, but how to prioritize it and how to appreciate um, the value of the data. Because so many of our organizations have stuff strewn all over themselves and they just don't know how to pull it together so that they can actually just get real insights. And what they do is they get locked in to using the data to drive costs out of the business or drive security in. And that eventually becomes its own diminishing return. You're, you've got, again, you keep, you mentioned some of the incredible case studies. How are clients finding you? Word of mouth for the most part. We've got a, a, a chief operating officer, uh, Bruce Leventhal, who's done a great job of creating a outreach program 
But it really, at the end of the day, it becomes word of mouth. For our folks who are watching and listening, who want to learn more about you and all of the amazing work you guys are doing, where is the best place for us to send them? Uh, to the website, scaleworks.co. And if they really have an appetite just to see where they stand and their ability to, to achieve scale, there's a assessment there. And we'd be delighted to get on uh, a debrief, take the assessment and let us walk you through it. And then, you know, set your own course. You don't need us. All right. Well, this has been Seth Green with Mark Jacobs from scaleworks.co. That's scale, W-E-R-K-S.co. Mark, thanks so much for joining us. Seth, thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for watching or listening. We'll talk to you or see you next time. Do you need money to fund your idea, product, or service? Are you ready to take your business to the next level but need capital to get it done? Kevin Harrington has heard more than 50,000 pitches and knows how to help you make the perfect pitch to get the funding for your entrepreneurial dream. He's distilled the process down in his perfect pitch cheat sheet, and it's yours for free. Just text PITCH to him right now at 727-888-2100. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 right now and claim your free perfect pitch cheat sheet. Text PITCH to 727-888-2100 to start funding your dream today. This show has been produced by Market Domination, LLC. To discover how you can have your own show completely done for you and turn it into a real published book and become the authority in your marketplace, go to www.marketdominationllc.com slash podcast offer.